Hi. It's really good to be here. Huh? Thank you for choosing me. And I am so ready for something different, to feel good. And I know it's my beliefs that are holding me back. That's just the most confounding thing, isn't it? I want so much to feel good oh, I, that huh? I can't. <laughs> I want so much to feel good that it hurts. It does. Yeah, so have you tried taking a nap? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Because when you wake up, you have a better chance of feeling good. What is it that's all over your face? What is it that you are using so steadily as your excuse not to feel good? What's I bothering you? I don't feel good all the time. I'm exhausted. I'm sick. I got sick last year. That's why we said the receptive mode is the replenishing mode. And do you know how people get exhausted? They get exhausted because they're in the receptive mode that isn't the source energy receptive mode. They're in the receptive mode. And so they're trying to help these people. They're trying to help these people. They're trying to solve these problems. And after a while, they just get depleted because they are not replenishing. They're just receiving inspiration to act. It's like our friend trying to help her niece out. It's those kinds of things. So do you ever go to the replenishing well? Do you meditate? I try. But I feel like then I just have all this, you know, like with it. But I, listen to the way you're arguing for your limitations. Did you ever have an effective time of meditation? Yes. And what does it feel like? You know, there was a time in my life. Well, don't get too philosophical about it because your <laughs> philosophy is what's tripping you up. What did it feel like when you had a successful meditation? Calm. Felt calm. Calm in comparison with what you've been describing of not feeling good. Does calm feel good? Yes. Yeah, so I... For a little while. But you see what you just did? You mm -hmm. turned calm into something that doesn't feel good. You're like deliberately leaning away from your receptive mode. And it's all right, a lot of people do it because you've been facing facts for so long. Yeah. What are the facts that you're facing that make you feel so uncomfortable? Who do you listen to on the radio? <laughs> I actually don't think I'm going to get well. So you don't yet believe in the replenishing mode. Yeah. Well, do you feel better sometimes than others? Mm -hmm. And can you get the better going? When you get the better going, does it last at all? When you find that feeling of calm, can you perpetuate it in any way? Yes, it feels out of my control. Sometimes if my body has energy, it flows. But if my body doesn't have energy, it doesn't. But you see, we get what you're saying and we understand when the momentum is going, it does feel out of control. You've been listening to us and you've heard the analogy that we offer endlessly about being at the bottom of the hill, trying to stop the car mm -hmm. rather than just stepping out in front of it when it first starts to roll down the hill. So momentum is really what you're talking about here. So you got to get out ahead of it. That's why we explain that when you first wake up in the morning, there's less of that momentum going because it stopped while you were sleeping. And so you have the better chance of finding something that feels good. Yeah, that's the best part of the day. Are there any subjects or conversations that you focus upon that when you focus upon them, you feel better? The next positive thought that I've been reaching for is it's okay. And then where does that lead? It's okay right now. I'm uh, okay right now. Yeah. And then where does that lead? Maybe. I can string some moments of okayness together and mm -hmm. I can feel okay. And how about I have felt okay and I felt not okay and I keep feeling okay. So I guess it doesn't matter if I feel not okay because I can feel okay again. So this is evident of it feeling better. So what is the distress that you are predominantly feeling? Describe it to us. That because I have no energy, I won't be able to continue in my purpose, my life, my relationship. All right. So then energy is the frequency of money. It's money. It's money is nothing. My energy is what I can produce. All right. Contribute. So if you listen to us long enough to accept the premise that there is a never ending stream of that energy. And so have you come to the conclusion that there is energy, but for some reason you're just not able to tap into it? Yes. And have you also followed us when we say that, you know, when you're not tapping into it because you feel negative emotion and you know, when you are tapping into it because you feel positive emotion. So can you accurately say you never tap into it? No. So would it be more accurate to say, sometimes I tap into it and I'd like to do that more. Yes. Is it accurate to say, I know when I'm in the receiving mode of it and I know when I'm not. Sometimes. If negative emotion is the indicator, then don't you know? 
sometimes I feel like it's like I can even be in a positive, but my body is so exhausted that it just takes it away. But the thing that we want you to separate is the manifestation that has already happened from the vibration. In other words, you can do this in the same way that a person could feel some enthusiasm about prosperity when they're deep in debt. If your current condition is going to control the way you feel, then you're right. You'll never find the energy. But if you're smart enough to know that this current condition is only the byproduct of what I've been doing energetically and that I can do something different, then doesn't that make you know that you can make a change? Isn't it logical? It's completely logical. Do you ever wonder what your inner being knows about this? We really want to talk about this depleting of energy because so many of you, you focus upon things that are debilitating energy wise and you keep doing it because you think you have enough resiliency to withstand your own vibrational storm and you get away with that for a while you get away with that for a while but the longer you do it the more it depletes you at the same time the more you are depleted the more you're asking for energy so you've got this thing going on where you're depleted and asking and the energy is coming but you're disallowing the energy that's coming so imagine a rubber band and someone's got hold of one end of it and you're taking hold of the other end of it and you're just barely pulling on it just barely so let's call this end the desire end and let's call this end the resistance end so there's a little desire and a little resistance doesn't feel that bad but what if the desire is like this and you're pulling against it that's the feeling of depletion that you're talking about and what it means is you have strong desire and that's the thing that you want to amplify I wouldn't be this depleted if I didn't have strong desire if there wasn't a strong countering energy that my inner being is flowing to me that I am denying I wouldn't feel depleted and haven't you asked yourself that question so many times when you look at people that don't know anything about any of this and they're just sort of bipping along bumbling along seemingly living happily ever after not really asking for that much they don't care they don't even know all the things that they could want because they've not even thought about all the things that they could want sometimes so, I'm jealous of that <laughs> well here's the deal there's no such thing as regression you can never be less than your life has caused you to be so you have one and only choice and that is to receive the energy that you've been asking for what you just said to us I wish my life hadn't caused me to ask for so much because somehow I can't get into the receptive mode of what I've asked for so therefore I wish that I hadn't asked that's never 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 true from your broader non-physical perspective but we can understand how it feels when you're not letting it in we refuse to acknowledge that you never let it in we know that you often do we refuse to acknowledge that you can't get hold of this and really get it going because we can feel the power of your desire we refuse to acknowledge that you won't be well or that you cannot do that because we can see what's going on in this vortex we can see how close to being in the receptive mode you often are and we are really not interested in being a sounding board that perpetuates your statements that are working against you you got to use different terminology or sleep a whole lot more <laughs> so how, got, how can I get out of the way you got to look for more positive aspects and when you find them stay there just a little while don't look for sounding boards that will listen to you we've started to say this to our mother who was talking about her daughter earlier her daughter's really asking for it when she says I don't feel good I don't feel good which makes a mother come forth with a solution and so you got to stop complaining when you don't feel good if you don't want people who think they have solutions to come you see what we're getting at well, one of my beliefs is that my mother has the same sickness as I do and she actually never got better and so like I bump up against that too I see it you know and uh... so we just want to put things in perspective for you sickness is about depriving yourself of energy and when you really really care about things you ask for really strong energy and when you deny it you feel really really bad and if you can just look at it in that way if you can stop framing it out in other ways if you want to be well you've got to stop arguing for the fact that you can't be 
And if you believe anything that we've been saying, then that should be something that you want every word that comes out of your mouth to be leaning in that direction. And we're not saying that you can get there all at once because momentum won't let you, but you can sure do better than you're doing as you're sitting here talking to us. You could make many more positive comments than you are about this thing that you want so much. Do you believe that you're an energy being? I believe that I'm an energy being. Say it. I believe I'm an energy being. Do you believe in law of attraction? I believe in law of attraction. I believe in law of attraction. Do you believe in your guidance system? Yes. I believe in I my believe guidance in system. My guidance Do you believe system. that your emotions are important information? My emotions are important information. I believe that before the feeling of lethargy sweeps over my body, that there were negative thoughts that preceded it. I believe I can catch those negative thoughts. I know they're there. I believe I can catch them. I believe I can turn this around, not all at once, but in time. I believe that now that I'm the second generation of this, that it's time that somebody got their hands around understanding what's going on. I believe that I'm a byproduct of observing something that became my vibrational frequency. I believe that I don't need to conditionally offer a vibrational frequency. I believe that I can unconditionally offer a vibrational frequency. Do you believe that? I'm going to try it on. <laughs> I want to believe I want to that believe. I can yes. offer a vibrational frequency that is different from the reality that I have observed. It is our absolute knowing that you can. It is our absolute knowing that you can. And sometimes us knowing it, us knowing it so much helps you know it just a little bit more. But you're right. You got to try it on because words don't teach. Yeah. Have fun with it. Yeah. 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 We'd like you to run just a little. Just run. Just run just a little. A little more. We'd like you to just run around the room just one time. We'll run with you. We'll run with you. Go with her. 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 Stop making stuff up. <laughs>